So the connections between the neurons are called synapses and synapse could be either electrical that means the two neurons are connected via gap junctions that you know also under the term nexus and this means that uh, charged particles might be transported through these gap junctions and it's a di direct electrical coupling of the cytoplasms of the two neurons or the synapse could be on the chemical basis where the, the uh, information is carried by neurotransmitters which are chemical molecules used for communication between the neurons. So further I will talk about the chemical synapse. If you have an axon, the terminal part is usually dilated. It contains vesicles with these neurotransmitters. There is a whole variety of neurotransmitters with different function. So this is an axon. This is the axon terminal with synaptic vesicles containing neurotransmitters neurotransmitter molecules and when the action potential will reach this this axon terminal the neurotransmitters will be released outside into a space called synaptic cleft. This membrane is called presynaptic while the membrane of the other neuron is called postsynaptic. The postsynaptic membrane contains receptors And upon binding the neurotransmitter uh, to the receptor, other cascades could be triggered, such as activation of second messengers, coupling with some ion channels, etc., which will be discussed in physiology classes. The neurotransmitter. here might be deactivated and or taken back by a process called reuptake. So there is the exocytosis and reuptake. These transport processes are active, they consume lots of energy that's why you will find also amounts of mitochondria here. So I have used the term action potential without actually explaining it. Let's consider a cell body with many dendrites. one axon. So there are actually 
many stimuli because e each dendrite might be branched into hundreds and in some cases even thousands of dendritic uh, branches. So there are many stimuli summing up here. the response traveling along the axon is only binary such as yes or no. Yes means there is an action potential as an electric change traveling along the membrane and no there is no action potential. So, binary, it will be like 1 or 0. For the purpose of histology, let's take only a simplified clarification of uh, how does the voltage change with time. The voltage will be in millivolts, time in milliseconds. If this would be the electric zero, then in the resting state, the voltage that could be measured on the cell membrane of a neuron will be approximately minus 70 millivolts. This is called resting potential. And it's caused by an inequilibrium of charged particles, ions, on both sides of the uh, cell membrane. Uh, again, this inequilibrium results from the activity of various ion channels, ion pumps. If there is a stimulus that is strong enough it will cause opening of ion channels and the voltage will go back to zero and even for a short time to positive values. This is called depolarization. So we get a stimulus here and the response is depolarization. Then again, with activity of other ion channels, ion pumps, the negative voltage is being renewed and it even goes for a short time to more negative values until it settles back and the resting potential is renewed. This process is called repolarization. Re and for this time, the neuron cannot react to other impulses, no matter how strong they are, and this is called a refractory period. The renewal of the resting potential might take approximately 5 milliseconds. So this is a very simplified idea and more details will be discussed in physiology classes. If we talk about uh, synapses, Might be more times according to which parts are connected. Should uh, an axon of a previous neuron interpolate directly on the body, on the soma 
of another neuron then this synapse is called axosomatic should an axon interpolate with a dendrite like this then will be an exodendritic synapse another option is that an axon interpolates here with the other axon especially in the initial segment which is without myelin and this will be called axon axon synapse Now we know that the cell body is a metabolic center of a neuron and these neurotransmitters are on, in the periphery. This requires a phenomena called axonal transport. And it's an exchange of metabolites between the cell body and the periphery of the, of the processes. So if we go to sign up the vesicles here in this terminal of an axon, Transmitters. This is the metabolic center of the cell with the nucleus and the rough endoplasmic reticulum and other organelles. And this would be the axon. Then the transport that goes to the periphery is called enterograde. transport while the other direction is called retrograde uh, this is possible due to a connection of cytoskeleton and molecular motors the cytoskeleton responsible for the transport it's the neurofilaments and there are the neurotubules neurotubules is just another term for the microtubules and the cytoskeleton uh, is used by molecular motors that are actually walking along the tracks prepared by the cytoskeleton. While the cell body with the nucleus and the granular endoplasmic reticulum serves for synthesis. The external transport could be also classified as the fast and slow the slow being like in millimeters per day and the fast being approximately 40 centimeters per day. There are more mechanisms of the axonal transport. An interesting thing that the cytoskeletal could be used also by some viruses to travel to the cell bodies and to spread in the nervous tissue.